What is up guys, it's the Valley Nissan Psycho here. Welcome to the Valley Psycho Podcast. In this episode, we're going to see, I'm going to tell you about whatever you saw in the title of this podcast and more precisely, because I have no idea what I titled this episode, but it's going to be about what I learned from Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Phil Knight. I've uh, watched their documentaries uh, and uh, I've been reading Shoe Dog from uh, the founder of Nike, Phil Knight, and uh, I got great lessons and what you're going to get from this episode is going to be uh, that you're going to prevent yourself from regretting things that you're currently doing right now that you might regret later. You're going to be able to beat your competition and find your edge, uh, have some, um, come up with some creative ways to beat your competition to create extraordinary things just like they did and what else you're going to be able to yeah just it's going to help you see what you need to do right now in your circumstances become because I'm going to give you the questions that uh, I asked myself to come up with new answers to how to beat my competition how to not regret things later and uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you about all this in a disorganized way, just to tell you, like, it's going to help you see how I came up with all these things. And uh, yeah, it's going to be very useful. If you're new here, my name is Valdi Saiko. I'm the founder of Origrowth.com, basically growth partners to business coaches, experts, entrepreneurs. And uh, here, I help ambitious entrepreneurs or anybody that wants to live a great life, just live a great life. If you're an entrepreneur, maybe build an empire, right? But if you just want to live an awesome life that is worth suffering for, hey, welcome. This is the show for you. So I, should, I suggest you subscribe because it's going to be very useful to you. So let's get into it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to tell you about is um, the, the thing that Sylvester Stallone said. And it's going to help you not to regret things later. And... He said that. He said from zero to 40 years old, you're gaining things. You're getting things, you're getting more success, you becoming stronger right now. It might be decreasing after 25 or something like this, right? But you're getting a lot of things, right? You're getting more success, more things, more cars, a house, kids, you're getting married, like you're getting a family, new relationships, right? But after 40 years old, you lose, you you start losing things and you start losing your health. You start losing your relationships. And this is the most important thing. And the thing that you most likely are going to regret are going to things that you didn't do or people. It's just going to be mostly people, right? And how you, how you behave with, with people you love. And so after 40 years old, you lose your kids. They go from your house, right? They, they go and live their life. You start losing, you're losing your health, your youth, and your ability to do things. And I thought, wow, this is like, this is sad, right? And in his documentary, Sylvester Stallone, like you see like his, his switching house, like he's, he's got this big mansion and great arts and all these things that he accumulated all his life and right now he's just moving f- from this he's just moving from this house and just like it, it's kind of like he's sad to go f- like in a new chapter right he's letting go from all these things that he accumulated and he's alone he's alone in his house there's no one his kids are gone He's alone, and so I thought, "Wow, me, I'm, uh, I'm a Chaldean, I'm a, a Syrian, right, from Iraq, and uh, in our culture, we put a really like big emphasis uh, on community, right? So everybody lives in a community. Like, I, I don't, because we've kind of isolated ourselves, like we, we've moved away from this a little bit when I was a kid." But there's something really important about a community, 
And I thought, I need to put my father and my mother inside a community, like, I, again. Like, put them back in this community where, like, you don't, like, you know, you, you gain things from zero to 40 years old, and then after 40 years old, you start losing things. The one thing that we don't lose is family and community. We always stay with family, right? We always stay in the community. And this is, I think, really useful because I think this is the way that our most of the people in our community just stay pretty happy. I'm not saying that they're, they're the most happy they could be because I think they have a lot of, you know, just they don't live their life properly. They're just not really healthy. But one thing that they keep is their relationships. And they don't move away from that. They always, they're not, they're never alone, right? They're never alone. They always have friends, communities, family. You know, when uh, in our culture, you're not supposed to move away from your parents until you get married. So you're never alone, right? And this, I think, is really useful to stay happy and to not be depressed, for example. I'm not saying you're not going to get depressed if you're not if you're constantly like with people, but it decreases the chances, the chances that you, you know, feel depressed or feel like lonely because you have the sense of like people that are like you around you, right? You're a member of something. So I think this was really useful. I need myself a community to make sure like I don't lose things. And I think I'm going to have a family and keep this tradition of just staying with a family, right? I don't think it's a. I think it's a good idea to stay with family up until you're married. I think it's a good idea to stay with a community that you share some values with. Even though I have a lot of things that I don't like in our communities, but I think there's like something very useful in it, right? If there's a problem, people are here for you. You don't feel alone, and. Uh, this is one thing that you can not lose after you turn 40 years old and you go after that you start losing things well this one thing you might not lose you don't lose your family you don't lose the community and this is the thing that is i think most important after like honestly I often i i imagine myself i visualize my success i i visualize how i got plenty of success i mean like i can travel wherever i want Whenever I want to, I got a private jet, I got a big mansion, right? But if I don't, if I see that and I see that alone, it's just, there's no taste to it. It's just not good. I don't like it. I imagine this and I just, it creates a big desire in me. And I really want it when I think about it with my family, with people I love being around me. And having this, like, enjoying this success with them, without this, without relationship, it's just not worth it, right? And so, yeah, this was the first thing I just, like, uh, it, it just put my mind, okay, I need to do this. I need to put my parents, because I'm young, I, I need to put my parents in a community so I'm, I'm sure they're not alone, and I'm sure they're taken care of, right? I'm sure that, they, they, like, it's the, uh, I think it's better to have a community than to have like, you know, uh, old people home, right? Where people are not necessarily like, they don't have the same values. They don't have the same things. Like there's nothing really bringing them together apart from the fact that they they are old, right? But when you're in a community and you grow old in this community with people that you have some things that you, you know, you're, you have the same religion, you believe the same things, you have some things in common that just makes you stick together. I think that's very useful. After that, I just, I was reading Phil Knight, his, uh, his memoir, Shoe Dog, right? He's the founder of Nike. And uh, let me tell you, this, this, this book is awesome. Like, I, I feel like I'm watching a movie when I'm reading it. And uh, it's, it's really good the way he tells the stories. I think Warren Buffett made a comment on his... Uh, on, on his uh, storytelling, on the cover of the book. I don't remember what it is, but like, he's like, Phil Knight is a gifted storyteller. I think this is it. And it is like, it's awesome to 
list to, to, to read and to just be here in the moment where Phil Knight is in, in his room. He's thinking of his company and he's having this problem. You feel like you're here with him. It's just really awesome. And so he, at one point, he's got a competitor, right? He's got a competitor named the Marlboro Man, right? I don't know if it's, it has something to do with the, the Marlboro Company. I'm not, like, I haven't finished the book, right? And um, he, this, this Marlboro Man is taking competition. So basically, Phil Knight, at one point, like, the way he starts his company is, like, he's importing shoes from Japan and from this company called Onitsuka, I think. And um, he's got the right to sell in the West and his competitor in the in the East, right? And what he wants is, at one point, him and uh, his employee noticed that the Marlboro man are creating, uh, is creating ads and putting ads like national ads, right? And so this is going to take away a lot from their business, from a lot of sales that they could do is going to take them. And so he goes to the Jap Japan because he sees like if he, if he goes like this, the Marlboro man is going to take over, right? He's not going to have a business anymore. And so what he does is he takes the next flight, next flight to Japan, and he goes and has a meeting with um, the company there. And at one point, the, the the Japanese he's always reading a book called how to do how to do how to do business with the Japanese because it's like they they don't tell you things up front, right? They just like kind of like uh, they really want to stay polite and everything, right? So. And they want to hurt your feelings, so they just, even if it's a clear, harsh no, they're not going to tell you, tell you a clear, harsh no. They're going to tell you, well, I think it's a good thing to think about, right? But you, you, you have no idea if you mess it up or if you, you've been, a, like, you've convinced them. You have no idea up until they, you work together or you don't, right? So, he goes there and he tells them, I, I really would like to have... Uh, the the national I don't know what it's called like right when the national rights to sell in the east as well right and all over the country I want to be the exclusive partner right and uh, the guy that takes care like of this I don't know what his name is anyway it's a, it's a new executive there and he says well uh, we really want someone that has already um, you know location in the east and he's a big player already so I, I don't know and Phil Knight says but, but but we do have location a location in the east and then he says oh well that changes everything but guess what Phil Knight didn't have he didn't have any location in the East. He just, like, he committed, and then he figured it out. And that's the thing, like, you need to, oftentimes to commit. To say, okay, I got, I got the resources, I got everything that you need, right? And then you make it happen. So it, it, it do, doesn't end up being a lie. Like, it's a lie at first, it's a small lie at first, right? But then you make it, like, become a reality. And so this is what he did. And then he actually became the exclusive partner and he put a big order to his location in the east but he didn't have any location in the east and so he figured it out he asked his employee to move there and then he gets he gets the the location in the east and he became the exclusive partner of Onitsuka and that's how he did most of these things most of the time he just committed and figured it out right this is like a repeating thing and one thing he also says and that stick with it stick with me like he always thought about I need to fail fast right I need to fail fast like failure has a lot of knowledge 
you, you learn a lot when you fail. And it was like, okay, the faster I fail, the, the quicker I will learn. And therefore, I will be closer to my goal while I, uh, when I fail. And I need to fail fast. And so this is what we constantly is thinking about. I need to fail fast. I need to fail fast. And during most of his, most of the beginning of his company called Blue Ribbon, and by the way, the way he came up with this name is when he went to the J Japan the first time f to see if this idea was possible and he could export uh, the shoes of Onitsuka in the US. He didn't have a company. And the the executives there asked him, what's your company called? And then he just kind of stressed out. He, he said he remembered he had a, a blue ribbon in his in his uh, room and he won he wanted to for a, a track like when he was when he did a track right and he just came up with a blue ribbon on the spot right so he just committed and then he figured it out he figured it out and then when he asked his employee to go to the east and take a, a location there his employee didn't want to move to, to the east, right? And he was like, oh no, I, I don't want to live there. And then he started talking himself out. He, he talked, the employee, his name is Johnson. He started to talk himself in. This idea of moving to the east. Oh, maybe I could, oh, I don't know. Like He started to talk himself in. And then he, he said something like, uh... I don't want everyone to know I'm a talentless f freak, right? He, he said the, the F word. And then Phil Knight felt the need to say, oh, no, you're pretty good. Like, he's, he's this, his best employee. Like, he's doing so many things. He's just so, like, high energy. He's just got so much, like, energy and enthusiasm toward his company like he's basically the, the building block of blue ribbon right and he's doing so many sales he's like he's such a high high valuable asset for phil knight and he's saying like i'm a talentless man like i i, I i'm worth nothing i should do this and he almost wanted to like cheer him up like no dude you, you you're good but he just stayed silent. And he was like, you know what? I'm just going to use silence. And this is a powerful technique. Using silence to your advantage and to let people talk themselves in what you ask them, right? When you are silent, you, you let people just come up with answers themselves, right? And so at one point, he just talks himself in it. And he actually like agrees to go to the east and take a location there. And this is like an awesome technique. Oftentimes you're just trying to talk too much, trying to convince, but just ask a, que ask a question and just be silent. And see, okay, you let them answer the question and then you stay silent for a little bit, like more time. Okay. okay. And you stay there and you, people will start filling up with their thoughts and you're going to know what they think and so therefore you're going to be able to and um, to influence them more and so yeah committed figure it out and use silence then i also listened to uh the podcast founder and this is a great podcast i don't remember the name of the of the guy uh, yeah I, I, I don't get it right now but he made a, a podcast called How to Make a Couple Billions of Dollars. Uh, he made a podcast, an episode on the book, How to Make a Couple Billions of, Bo of Dollars from Braid, Brad Jacob. Brad, Brad Jacobs. And this guy gave a lot of value in, uh, in this book and in the episode. And what... Uh, what I got from it was that it's impossible to spend, to overspend on talent. This was a really great insight for me. And because like 
when you spend more, you get higher quality. And when you spend more on people, you make them feel obligated to render a higher, like a better service, right? A, a better, like, to do better work. And so this is why it's really impossible to overspend on talent. Now, you could, there's different types of talents, right? It tells you like there's A talent, B talent, C talent, and you want A talent. You want A players, right, in your team. And you cannot overspend in the sense that you cannot, you know, choose A players over C players, and that would turn out to be a bad decision. This, this is impossible, right? If you choose A players, it's always going to be a better decision. But you can, of course, like logically overspend and give the, the pay of a B talent on a C talent. And it also tells you how to recognize these talents. And this is where he gives you like this, um, this scenario where he, ima he imagines basically if someone in, in your team right now were to quit, if right now this guy were to quit on short notice, like right now he enters in your office and he tells you, hey, I quit. What's your reaction to that? And your re reaction will dictate what type of talent he is. If you're like, well, I guess it's a, whew, it's a relief. Then you're like, ah, this is a C talent, right? This is like, it's a good thing that they, they're gone. If it's a relief. If you're like, oh, this is not cool. This is not practical. But I guess we could maybe find someone better, right? This is a B talent. If you're like, oh, shoot, I, I, this, is, this is not good. I need to keep this guy. Oh, I'm, I'm in deep. I, I have big problems right now. And then you know it's an A talent. And so, yeah, this was uh, something really useful. And also, he, he asked very useful questions. And questions, like I've got this thought this week that questions are really like a tool that helps you discover the world. I, I was thinking of trying to discover new places around where I live, right? Because I, I didn't discover every like I didn't went I didn't go to most of the places that I could visit here, and I didn't know where to go really. So I was like, I need to ask people questions. I need to ask people, like, what is, what is, what what could I visit here? What is awesome to, what what it, what place is awesome to go to right now here? And I was like. Oh, this is a new question. I've, I've never asked this question to anybody, right? And so this question would make me get new answers. And this new answers will allow me to discover better the world. And so I was like, oh, this is like, wow. New questions help you discover the world. If you get, if you ask people new questions, they will come up with new answers and you will get new insights into the world. And if you ask new people the same questions, you get also different answers. It's a combination that you can create, right? You can ask new questions to old people that you already know. You always, you always talk to these people, but you never ask them these particular questions, right? And so you get new answers from this. But you can also ask these same questions to new people. And new people will oftentimes just make your world expand. And so these are some questions that uh, Brad Jacobs asks to like see the answers and discover these answers so what stupid thing is my company doing right now and you can turn it and ask yourself what stupid thing am i doing right now and when you ask yourself this question and you let yourself try to answer it like really try to answer it you come up with some answer that you think okay i might i might think that this is a good thing to do but I might be completely mistaken and so you write down the answers to this and it gives you new answers to new insights on where where you should go right now or what you should do or what you should stop doing what thing my company should be doing right now like and I'm not doing this and I should be doing this right and also he tells you about the feedback getting feedback feedback from uh, employees and clients and using the feedback to improve yourself just asking always okay what did what was your experience like what did you like what did you not like and um the founder of the founder podcast uh 
I forgot his name, man. Yeah. Um, and he, he, he tells you, he, te- he says in this podcast that he also f- seeks feedback from his family, right? So he, ha- he asks his daughter, how am I doing right now as a father, right? How am I doing here as a husband? And asking even people in, your, like, in your relationships, how, how do you think I, I am right now? I want honest feedback just to be able to improve in this area of my life. And so this helps you, right? Now it's unconventional, like not a lot of people do this, but I think it's really useful. And I think I'm going to try to, first of all, ask myself, how am I doing? And as a, as a son, as a brother, as a father, if you are a father, and, and see, okay, what is my kind of, like, you, if, if you just ask yourself this question, you kind of get an answer. Now, to get real feedback, you, you know, I think it's better to ask the people that you have a relationship with. Then I listened also to Ed Milet. And it was in one of his uh, episodes, he, he talked about focus and hunger being the two character traits that he looks for in people that he wants to recruit. And that are two characteristics, one of the two most important characteristics in yourself as well to succeed. Because... When you focus, you just get so much more things done, right? But the real like thing is hunger. And when you see hungry people, you know things are going to get done. And hunger is created by this de- desperation, right? When you're desperate for something, you just need to get it. You absolutely, you have to get it. You can't, you, you really... You can't live without it. And when you have this hunger, you make a lot of things happen. And you move through all problems really easily and seamlessly. Because it it gives you this analogy. Imagine if your kid had a grave accident and they were in big danger. You would just stop whatever you're doing right now and just be super obsessed and focus on that thing. Right, and you would just do it at like you do do anything to actually go and see them and see if they're okay. And if you were in a conference and you you could do anything, like if there's a bodyguard right now just stopping you from going, that you just like you would do whatever it takes to go and see them. And uh, once you get this desperate, this hungry for your goals, then. You make really fast progress, and every obstacle seems like it's not an obstacle. It seems like it's just like something to go past through it, and everything just becomes easier because you're just so focused and obsessed by it, and just like hungry. You need to get there, so there's no ab- there's absolutely zero excuses you can come up with to uh, I need to get there. Like I'm going to get there. It's not a question. Or, for example, when um, you, a mother uh, will, will tell you, okay, my kid is going to walk no matter what, right? So, at one point he, he said, um, you shouldn't, um, what if, what if a, ki- a kid takes, like, too long to... A baby took, takes too long to learn how to walk, right? And would the mother say, say like, okay, well, I, I guess I, I tried. Uh, he, he didn't. He didn't walk up until like three years old. Uh, I guess he's not walking. No, the mother is going to. Like, she, he's going to walk no matter what, right? I, I don't care. Like he's going to walk. There's no way. And so this is a standard and something like. She's obsessed and like hungry, like she's desperate to make him walk. Because if he doesn't work, walk, uh, he's not going to be much in society, and he's going to be in danger, and he's not going to have a great life. And a mother has this need to protect her child, right? So now let's get to Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I watched uh, the first part of his uh, three parts Netflix um, documentary, right? And uh, I loved it. I really think it was like awesome. And in it, 
he says, it basically tells you how he succeeded and how he became, you know, a great bodybuilder. And uh, the three parts are bodybuilder, actor, American, right? Because he, first of all, became a great bodybuilder, then he became a great actor, then he became um, the um, senator, I don't know, like, you know, the, the president of California, right? I think it's sent, right? What do you, you guys say? So, when he, the, the first thing that he did to become a great bodybuilder and to achieve his goal is he, he got inspired, first of all, to get his, to this goal by some, by, by a movie, right? And so he saw a movie, it, it was a Hercules and there was this guy in it that was a, the main uh, character, Hercules, and he had a great body. And when he saw that, he was like in awe. He was like, oh, this is what I want. And so when he, he saw that, he was oh my God, I want this. I want to be a hero like this. I want to be like, a, I want to have a great body like that. And so when he went back home, walking, he saw that uh, in a shop that there was a journal of the guy, of the actor that played Hercules. And in the journal, he just basically stayed, uh, he basically gave away like all his training and how he, what he did basically to become, to have this great body and his workout and everything, right? And so Arnold got this and when he learned that, okay, he's, he's waking up at 5 a.m. and he was 15, 15 years old, I think. He, wake, he's wake, he wakes up at 5 a.m. He works out three times a day and he started doing exactly that. And so I, I was like, okay, to get to your goal, all you need to do just to figure out one person that got there, one person that you want to be exactly like that, right? And figure out what they did to get there and just do exactly that, copy them. And when you copy them, at one point, he actually competed against his idol, right? And he won. And so at one point he just like, well, I just got there not only did I get there, I just actually like became more. And so this is how he, he did this. And he was visualizing a lot, right? He visualized his goal and he was really clear about what he wanted. He had like a real clear, sharp idea. And he tells like, it was like there in front of me. I could see it. And he he had the uh, images of bodybuilders and the one for example like uh, mr uh, universe right and so he was like i could see it i just need to take his head and put mine on it and this is it i could see it i, I just need to put my head on it and so this makes you get an idea on how he visualized it like he basically like just Imagine you're like, in your in your mind, you have a software, like you have a f Photoshop, right? And you can create images the way you want to. And the next level is to create a video, like a just a, a movie scene that you can see and replay in your mind. And he was doing this as, as well, because he was imagining his success in being on stage and in winning and people screaming, Arnold, Arnold, Arnold. And he was imagining that. And 10 years later, this actually happened. He won on stage and people were actually screaming, Arnold, Arnold, Arnold. And this is awesome to see it taking place. Like this is a manifestation, right? But he actually took action and the way he had a clear vision of what we wanted and he did exactly what the people that, get the, that got there did. And he also changed his environment. He... He went with the bodybuilders that were the best, right? He had this group of friends. He always had created this group of friends wherever he went, right? So he was in Austria. He went to uh, Germany and he went to uh, South Africa and he went to America. He always had, he always created this group of friends with him. And... This, this group of friends, this entourage of him, made him 
push himself better. And at one point, he loses against a competitor. And he decides to call him and ask him how he did it, right? Because he, he went to America, and in America, the, the standards were not to be, like, to win, you didn't, you didn't have to be the, as big as possible, but you need, you need to, uh, to have a great shape, right? You need to be lean as well. And so he didn't know how to do that. And so he asked his competitor that, that beat him to teach him. And so he was willing to learn even from his competition, right? And so this was very insightful. Like it, it, it tells you like, okay, he's going to do whatever it takes. He's going to humble himself and learn from anyone. And um, yeah, this was uh, really useful to me. And um, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to give you a list of questions that I've asked myself and some answers that I came up, came up with to like how, how could I improve myself, right? Because I, when I watched Civilization Stallone documentary, I had like, I started to come up with questions to ask myself as well. What could I regret right now? Because Sylvester Stallone had a lot of regrets, right? And tells you like, okay, uh, right now I'm going to make sure I don't get any more regrets. And so I was like, okay, how can I make sure that I don't get myself any regrets for later? And so I asked myself these questions. Whose approval are you trying to get? Because Sylvester Stallone was trying to get the, the approval of people in general because he didn't get it from his dad. His dad was really harsh. He didn't receive love from his parents. And he was trying to get love from everybody else, right? From like the celebrity. And so I'm trying to like, who, whose approval am, am I trying to get? And who do you want to give you love, right? And so maybe it's a different answer for anyone, anyone right? Maybe it's your partner, maybe it's your parents, maybe it's uh, girls, boys, right? Maybe it's uh, someone that you look up to. And oftentimes for me, I think it's like I'm trying to get approval for myself and I never get it. <laughs> I think the first time I actually got approval for myself it was for my last birthday. I was like, I, I did really a lot. And I was extremely disciplined and I, I just really realized, okay, you, you did something great this year. And so you need to celebrate your birthday properly for that. And this was the first time I actually got my approval, I think. I never, like, I'm really very hard on myself, naturally. Like, inherently, I'm just really hard. I just tend to put myself like some high, high standard. And I never met them. And so I'm, I'm constantly trying to get myself get approval from my from myself and I don't usually get it right so other questions what things are you currently doing or what way are you living that you could regret later and so for me this is being alone like I'm, I'm just alone too many too, too much I don't talk enough to people and one of my regrets when I go to uh, to travel or things like this. It's just not to talk to enough people, not to meet new people. And this is often that, like just things that you, you can create awesome moments, but you don't just because, uh, I don't know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, make them feel uncomfortable. I, I don't want to feel uncomfortable myself just to go meet new people. I don't want to uh, disrupt what they're, whatever they're doing, right? In the gym, uh, yesterday, there was a guy that was not, from here and he talked to me he didn't seem to speak really like French and uh, he had his uh, his headphones on it was training it, like we were like uh, on the same machine right and I was like I, I want to know more about this guy he had his headphones on so I, I didn't want to you know bother him maybe I, he doesn't want to be bothered I don't want to go and ask him questions maybe he doesn't like I had all these ideas all these questions all these objections to actually go and talk to him, like just open up the conversation. And I, honestly, I, I was going to do it. I was like, just thinking, maybe he doesn't want to, right? 
and what would have what uh, right now looking back on it what would have happened really if he didn't want to right i would have been rejected i would have been like uh, feeling like okay he doesn't want to talk to me cool i, I could get over that right it's just not a big problem but if i if if he wanted to to speak with me i maybe would have discovered a just awesome friend right and he he had like he was more more muscular than me right i was like maybe i can learn from him and so i messed up on a lot of good potential things just because i didn't want to disrupt i, I didn't want to go through the little uncomfort uncomfortable uncomfortable situation then uh what does really matter i asked myself like i didn't came up with an answer yet but what does really matter uh, the first thing that come come came to mind is, is like relationships what does it really matter like at the end of the day relationships so yeah to me this is it maybe in your life it's different but maybe what relationships do really matter right and when you really focus on what really matters everything else tends to diminish in importance right so you don't care as much of what people will think of you you don't you don't care so much about so many other things because you care so much about what really matters then i i would this note to myself to make a company that like like succeed big time to you just need one person you need to find the right guy or girl that will put all of his energy and effort and enthusiasm and so much into your company because he's just so passionate about it he's obsessed by it he's hungry for it that your company is just like growing without you like you don't need to do much because you got your Johnson right it's like i got this from Phil Knight and in a in his company he's got this guy and he's just making all the sales he does Phil Knight almost doesn't have to work he actually goes and gets a job at another company Well, he has his own company and he has got Johnson working for him because Johnson just does everything for him, right? He's just like he he just makes so much so much sales. He comes he comes up with new ideas and new new ways to promote his shoes. He, he just does everything. And so if you could just find one guy like this, you could just turn around your company and just make it go big like this. So you need to find this guy and maybe multiple kind of persons like this and i ask myself this what remarkably stupid thing am i doing so this is kind of a variation of the, the other one right and that i could be regretting later and i wrote down those answers one not flossing because i i had learned some like uh effects on flossing what you the consequences everything on a on a podcast and I and one guy was like okay what could I regret later on, on my in my health and it was like flossing flossing like in 30 years I will regret not having flossed more uh two eating meat and rice only so maybe I'm, I'm making a mistake right now I mean even if I feel good right now in this diet I, I've tested a bunch of things I went only meat and for health issues if you haven't watched my other list to my other podcasts uh this is the only thing I I eat right now eat I eat only meat and rice just that and maybe I'm making a mistake doing this maybe it's not great for your health long term so I should maybe look into this not talking to people when I have the opportunity not spending enough quality time with my family and extended family and friends right uh spending too much time and energy working out with no real goal because when i was trying to heal my hands while while working out and i don't have any goal exactly right now so i'm maybe just wasting my energy just working out uh maybe uh watching too much netflix when i'm eating I, i'm just watching netflix all the time right now <laughs> honestly because i i think it's a uh, you know i watched netflix i watched the documentaries of silver stallone and arnold schwarzenegger why i eat right and so 
maybe I should stop doing this and listen to audiobooks, which will give me more value. But I think at the same time, I relax a lot. I just like, when I watch Netflix and I eat, I just like, it's my time for, to relax to then be able to work with more energy, with more focus. Not traveling enough. That could be one thing that I'm, I could really regret. And so this, when I, I thought of this, I told, I told myself, okay, every Sunday right now, from now on, every Sunday I'm going to go and seek a new place, discover some new place. And then I went and I live in France, uh, one hour aside from Paris. And I was like, you know what? There's not many places around here, you know, less than a, an hour, uh, about, about 30 minutes ride from here. So I don't take too much time traveling that I could visit. Like this, oh, it's not worth it. I, it doesn't excite me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to, on the macro, on the yearly, I'm going to try to travel more, but uh, weekly, no, nah, I'm not going to do this weekly. Then, um, moving to another country, I'm thinking of moving into another country, uh, one of the reasons is taxes, and um, maybe I will regret moving to the other country just for taxes. And um, maybe I could uh, do something else. I don't know. Then, what's the one essential thing I could do to beat all competition? And I would then find my Johnson, right? If, if I find just this one guy that has this excitement and this enthusiasm, I'm golden. Like, I, really. Then I saw a video on YouTube. I I, I, ne I really rarely watch YouTube now. Like I barely watch any YouTube videos. I just watch Netflix now instead. I find like the, the quality the, the quality of the content is higher on Netflix. When I, I watch mostly movies and documentaries, like the ones that I talk, told you about. So it's higher quality content. I enjoy it more, and I get less distracted. I get less like unnecessary information in my mind from all this what's happening on YouTube and everybody talking about and short form videos I often like if I watch long form YouTube videos I often end up watching short form and it just distracts me more than anything else but this uh, yesterday I watched a video of some people in my field and it impressed me and I get kind of mad I, I was like mm. they, they're just like they're making too much progress they like getting ahead, like way ahead of me and it bothers me it bothered me and um i had this competitive inside of me, like i was like okay i need to beat them I, I need to beat them i need to beat them forgive my english so i asked myself okay how can i beat them and i came up with these answers can i work harder longer can I outlast them? Can I just work for a longer period of time, like macro? And I was like, mm, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think they, they're they dialed down. Like they have their routines. They, they're going to work as much, if not more than me. They're going to work for longer than me. I, I'm macro, right? They're going, I'm not going to outlast them. This is most likely not going, going to happen. And when you get to a certain level, you're most likely not going to outwork, outlast people. But you may, you maybe could outsmart them. And you can find an advantage that only you have. And I thought of this because I, I remembered when I listened to Will, the Will Smith uh, autobiography. And he was trying to beat Tom Cruise. And Tom Cruise was going to promote his movies, right? And so to promote his movies, Tom Cruise would go and just shake the hands of every single one of his fans. And Will Smith knew he, like, he was not going to do this. He, he couldn't do that. And he, couldn't, he, he could maybe get to his level, but he would never beat him. He, he's like doing so much. Tom Cruise is just like a, the beast. And so 
He was like, how can I beat him? What do I have that he doesn't have? And he was like, ah, music. I was a rapper. And so he started doing concerts, like music concerts for his fans. And he promoted his movie in a bigger way like this. Right? And he couldn't do that. Tom Cruise didn't, couldn't do that. And so I asked myself, okay, what competitive advantage do I have over my comp competition? What things do I have that they don't have? And honestly, I have no idea. Honestly, right now, I, I don't, I don't know. I was like, mm, I speak French. Doesn't really. Mm, I don't see how this could be useful to me right now. Um, you know, what do I have right now? I have, I don't have much of an edge. Like uh, my, myself, I've, I don't have this thing that is going to separate me directly. And so I was like, okay, what could I maybe develop? Because right now, if I don't have it, maybe I could develop something that I will have a an ease with, right? So maybe uh, my parents, my, my my father is a musician, was a musician. He's a, a violinist, and he just plays a lot of instruments. He's good with music, right? And I know I have a good ear, like I. I I like music and I could potentially, I don't know, sing, dance, create movies. Like I, I just try, like, maybe I have this, like, come to, I may have something creative inside of me that I haven't exploited and I could maybe do this and this could turn out to be, like, if I'm good at it, I can improve on that and this could, would create my competitive advantage that they could not use and I could beat them with this. Maybe... Uh, I should, uh, ah, I have this podcast, right? Maybe I could uh, vlog, right? And I could, because I'm not that good at podcasting. Like, I'm, you know, uh, talking is not really my strong suit. I'm doing this because I know I want to be, be a better communicator and I want to document the process and I want to help you guys. I really want to help, but it's not my strong suit, especially in English, right? I'm trying to improve my English skills as well. So it's not my strong suit. Maybe vlogging, maybe creating really awesome videos. Maybe uh, I was uh, pretty good at writing ads and coming up with creative advertisements. Maybe I could do this for my company. Ha! Huh. And I started getting more and more ideas. And uh, I need to be able to do something that they can't do. And to do that, to be them, I need to be better myself. Like not just my company, but myself. And so how, how can I become better? I need to have either more time and or do better things, right? So I, I cannot have better time, more time, but I can do more in the time that I have. How can I do this? Well, I can have more energy. So I can eat better, sleep better, get more sun. Like one of the things that they most like my companies are most likely not going to do, going to do is sleep nine hours. I'm going to try sleep nine, to sleep nine hours because every time I did sleep nine hours, I get more done. I have more energy and I'm less likely to be burning out. And I know my competitors could really easily get burned out. And so there I could beat them here, right? Uh, my diet on point, right? I know it, it, at least maybe it's not the healthiest long term but on the daily on a daily basis i i have more energy than them i think maybe i can uh, recruit better people i can create a great culture workplace i can invest better my money i can use my time only on the highest leverage activity i could create a better personal brand i could um, be myself like follow my interests personal interests like i i like uh, I'm going to try to fly planes. For example, I'm going to try to get my uh, pilot license. I I like to do this. I like to do like I, I I like to fight. I could do things that would differentiate me, and most likely my competitors will not do that because this is like this is inherent to me. Like I like that. I could have less taxes. This is why I'm thinking of moving. Uh, and um, 
use these these resources to invest it and just get more money to invest again in my company and use this leverage to be, maybe just expand and um, even though maybe expanding would mean lessening my focus maybe I could focus more I could go even more specialized I don't know I'm just coming up with answers to how can I beat my competition my comp- competition and maybe you think oh I don't have any competition you do even if you're not in business you have competition your coworkers are your competition you're anyone if you're a man and you're trying to you know have a girlfriend every single man out, out there is 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 your competition you're trying to become a better man right to have more to offer to the to the girl so she chooses you over someone else she she sees something in you that, that she doesn't see in anybody else so you're always in competition life is a competition and um yeah i was like okay not I, be extremely disciplined i think this is a something that i can beat them on i'm really extremely disciplined and have zero distractions or maybe change my distraction into positive ones so maybe instead of watching uh, netflix movies i could watch documentaries uh, or i could listen to audiobooks right and just get more information better information maybe they're not getting this kind of information ha i'm really dialed in on my health personally so i could i could beat them on my productivity daily something like this and then i also th- thought about this thing like imagination imagination is very important as you saw with Arnold Schwarzenegger because he imagined himself he visualized himself but also on a daily basis i noticed that every time i imagine myself going through the next day and how i want the next day to unfold i actually do everything that i need to do the next day when i don't imagine myself doing something i usually don't do it and so if you want to make sure you do something just imagine yourself doing it it's very like imagine yourself like doing like when I, when i plan my day when i plan the next day i pl- i do it the night before and while i write every single hour what i'm going to do by the way the last episode the right just before this one the last episode on uh, the system i used to reward myself and to achieve my goals just please go and listen to this one like you can actually leave right now this episode and go listen to this one or watch the, the, the other one and use the the reward system to actually achieve like your goals and make sure you actually do the right work and so when you imagine you end up almost creating like a a contract with yourself like you're going to do this and you imagine this and you I like you said to imagine how you're going to do it and so you expect to do it and so when you expect to do it when it comes to the time to do it you actually do it like you follow through and also boredom boredom is very useful because it was because I was bored all the things that I came up with right now all these questions I asked myself it was while I was bored I I watched the Sylvester Stallone sly documentary and uh after that I just I paused. I I stopped for 10 minutes. I was like thinking in my head. I was like in boredom like there was no external things going on. I was just in my room. Okay. And thinking. And I started okay, I I I took my phone. I started writing, writing some notes to not forget what I was thinking about. And this is extremely useful. And I was like okay, I need to journal more. I used to journal a lot every day at the end of the day I, would, I used to take like 10 to 30 minutes just journaling my thoughts and thinking of ways I could improve and I don't do this anymore I do it like in a really quick way because I don't want to waste time but you really this time that I used made me improve a lot and so I think it's a uh, really useful to get bored and to imagine yourself and when you imagine yourself you need to plan right and to plan the right way and to reward yourself to make yourself do the behavior that you want to do i just really suggest you listen to this episode i don't know if you can hear here i don't know but listen to it watch it and apply it it's going to change your life hopefully this one was useful as well i think it it was it was pretty valuable come on you can give it give it a like 
subscribe and share it with someone that you think it might help as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.